One of the bigger stories from the last few weeks that seems to have been brushed aside just a little bit really hasn't gotten the attention I think it probably should be getting, uh, seems to be sort of fading away into the shadows, is a story by the New York Times that came out regarding what they call the palace coup at the Magic Kingdom, saying the inside story of how Bob Iger undermined and outmaneuvered Bob Chapek, his chosen successor, and returned to power at Disney. This story uh, is like a novel. It, it goes on and on. Um, one of the longest New York Times stories I think I've ever read in my life, um, but goes into such incredible detail as to to how not only Bob Chapek was chosen to become Disney CEO, but how instrumental Bob Iger was in that selection. And then ultimately, um, I don't know, uh, taking a knife to the back of the guy throughout his tenure, uh, and then coming out on the other side saying, yeah, he deserves to be pushed out. I'll save the day. Get me back in there. Uh, it is the most bizarre Shakespearean type of story um, I think I've ever read, and one that very, very closely aligns with the last time there was a huge shakeup of CEO at the Walt Disney Company, uh, where, believe it or not, Bob Iger was involved, only it was Michael Eisner in the Iger seat that time. Uh, oh. And Oh. Michael? And it was one of those situations where it was truly Shakespearean. Uh, James B. Stewart, the writer of this article, uh, was also the author of the book Disney War that chronicles very much in depth what was happening in the final years of the Eisner era at the Walt Disney Company and how Roy Disney, the nephew, lost all faith in Michael Eisner. And in the end, the transition of power happened between Eisner to Iger. Um, Iger came in as a very unique individual, somebody who probably um, had his own wits about him uh, as to how he wanted to make an impact on the Walt Disney Company. And over the course of time, Iger grew more and more into that power seat, grew more and more into that control. Uh, and every time he was supposed to give up that power, Somebody wasn't good enough in the last minute, and they extended that contract. Well, now this story goes into depth as to how exactly Bob Chapek was chosen, and once he was, what happened next? So we'll start here, Tyler. Um, the idea that Chapek came in when he did, the article does a great job outlining the fact that this is, and this is so bizarre to me, Iger was like pushing to get Chapek into that seat faster than anybody wanted he was pushing to get chapek into the ceo control ship right before the pandemic shut down and i don't know if the two are connected but the parallels seem very interesting to me where bob Iger knew the parks in asia were being shut down had an understanding of what was happening globally and that it was probably coming here and was pushing Chapek through the approval process to get him into the driver's seat immediately, even foregoing the traditional board reference checks that are needed to go sit with the board and be approved, shoved him through just to get him in the driver's seat and Chapek running with things. Um, that's where the story really kicks off at. Any idea, any theory as to how or why Bob Iger thought Chapek needed to grab the keys so fast without fully being vetted. I don't know if we'll ever know the true answer to that question. I feel like Iger will die with that knowledge in his brain, <laughs> but I do feel that there's a good chance that, as you said, Iger knew the parks were going to be shutting down and things were probably not looking so good. And maybe he was like, I could use a little vacation, you know? <laughs> and he just decided, well, uh, maybe we need a fall guy. I, don't, it, I mean, it's a very real possibility. Um, but it just, it seems kind of crazy to me that he would just put this whole company on the line for something like that obscene. So, I, I mean, I couldn't really tell you what his love of Chapek was before this all started because with the whole New York Times story, it just seems like he really just did not like him the entire time. I mean, so the only thing I can think of is that he just kind of knew that he wanted JPEG to be a fall guy. I mean, but, you know, I'm not really surprised that things transpired the way they did um, because it just seems that the whole entire time 
even when Iger did let him make certain choices, like creating that uh, Disney Media and Entertainment Group, like doing the restructuring of the company, and even like the whole like the whole thing in Florida with the Don't Say Gay bill, all those things, like I felt like Chapek just shot himself in the foot left and right, and there was kind of nothing he could do to repair his reputation after that because in my eyes a disney ceo is kind of like a disney character themselves like they are the face of the biggest media company in the world or one of the biggest and they have to appeal to so many different people they have to appeal to you know the creatives the the money makers the and the audience all at the same time and it just seemed like from the beginning everything that Chapek was doing was undermining all of those people all at once. And it didn't seem like there was any, like Iger got in the way. Like, of course he did. But, and maybe, and, and now that I'm even saying this out loud, I'm thinking maybe Iger even let him make those mistakes on purpose, you know, knowing that this was going to go poorly for him. Um, but it just really does seem like Iger had the intention of getting back in that driver's seat for quite some time. Um, so I don't know what to tell you. It's the whole story is pretty wild. There, the the article is very like he said this and then she said that. So some definitely a lot of people were talking, but it almost read like a bedtime story or something, which was it was like very very long. It was, it, it was <laughs> bedtime story. It was like a it was like a dramatic you know uh, reconstruction of the of the events. I feel like like I said, full scale novel. This yeah. is how it came across, right? Yeah. It just went on and on. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I really do feel like the, the restructuring of the company, it made all the creatives hate him. Um, the don't say gay bill thing, like he made, he, the fact that they didn't do anything made them look even worse. And then it started creating so much attention around them that when he finally did come out and say, Oh, I'm so sorry. I should have been your ally. Then he went too far in the other direction. So he, he pissed off all the LGBTQ people, and then he pissed off all the conservatives, like, all in one go. But then Iger comes out and goes and pretty much sticks up with what Obama said, which undermines Chapek. because oh, that's true, too. Yeah. Because then he go, everybody's like, oh, Iger, he's the best. And then Chapek's like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, and, and this draws the comparison here. Let's not forget that the company adopted a policy. It wasn't JPEGs. That, that, that the company, was the next right, thing. adopted that policy of uh, Disney's above the fray of politics. Let's not get involved. Let's not say these things. And then Iger, uh, as you mentioned, uh, jumped on top of something that uh, President Biden had said at the time that this was going to endanger the lives of young LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ youth. Um, and on top of that, was going to be something that was uh, very j- dangerous to the public if it got passed, um, which then led Chapek to go, well, well, wait a minute. I thought we weren't saying anything. I thought like we were being quiet. And so it made him feel even more forced to now, well, do I need to get out in front of this again? What's happening here? And then the board didn't know what to do. I found throughout this entire story that board of directors was just as messed up as Iger was in this process for not doing the due diligence, for not holding people accountable, for not doing what needed to be done to safeguard the company throughout. They seem to be just as at fault here as Iger had been throughout the entire process. Very disappointing. I mean, all I can say is that this article does seem like it's more sympathetic towards JPEG than anybody else. And and I think as we discussed like before the show, I do think JPEG was whispering in some ears here. And oh, so, so this just seems like it's more written from the perspective of, you know, oh, Chapek got screwed, you know, <laughs> and 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 I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think that I think things were smooth for him. Definitely not. But like if he actually made these good decisions to begin with, I feel like he wouldn't have been in this position at all. Um, and And the other thing, too, like going back to what we were just talking about, like. Not only did they, they 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 dug themselves into a corner because they came up with this with the uh, solution of not doing anything political, like you said. But then they also like do so much marketing around like, oh, the inclusion key and and we and and everybody's welcome and all that. Like yeah. they so they they can't talk out of both sides of their mouth at the same time, and that's what they were trying to do, and and so 
again, like there were huge companies that signed this, that signed uh, against the, that bill and like Nike, for example, and everything. And those companies didn't get a bunch of flack. Like the reason is, is because they just quietly signed it. They said, yeah, this is, this is right. We should just uh, love people, you know? And they just quietly signed it and they went on about their day and everybody was like, okay. But Disney just hemmed and hawed so much about it and they just took so much time and then they made it so public. It's DeSantis, yeah. He, then he made it this whole political uh, like platform for himself too. So it was like, a, it was like a, a, just a perfect storm of all these bad things happening at the same time. I know that in the story, uh, Mr. Chapek was scheduled to make his formal debut as chief executive at Disney's annual shareholder meeting. Mr. Chapek was nervous, uh, they wrote, saying all the more so because public speaking had never been his strength. Well, we we know that, don't we? Yeah. Um, before the meeting, Disney's investor relations personnel assembled thick briefing binders covering every conceivable data point in question that might arise. Armed with these binders, Mr. Iger and Mr. Chapek settled into the front compartment of the Disney Gulfstream jet for the four and a half hour flight to Raleigh, North Carolina, the site of that year's meeting for what Mr. Chapek expected would be an extended preparation session. Several passengers, including Mr. Chapek, recalled that Mr. Iger pulled out his iPad and started flipping through recent photographs, telling the stories behind them. There were photos of himself with Mr. Paul McCartney and recent dinner guests in New York. Mr. Chapek said he tried to steer the discussion back to the annual meeting, but Mr. Iger interrupted, saying, Did you see my new yacht design? <laughs> Flustered by Mr. Iger's digressions, Mr. Chapek got up and moved to the plane's rear compartment. This went on to say that uh, later, when Iger, I guess, got around to uh, moving beyond his yacht, um, he decided he was going to then get together with uh, Chapek and go over the briefing binders, which apparently Chapek was already looking into. And he said, if I have any questions, I'll come talk to you guys, um, which, according to the story, instantly made Iger go, I guess he doesn't want to. Yeah, I guess he doesn't want to learn from us. I guess he doesn't. And it started there on his debut day, right, where he's supposed to go in front of everybody as the first the first real time as ceo um it began there i thought that was fascinating later in the story um during the uh covid shutdown period as things were starting to collapse around the world california governor gavin newsom called uh, bob Iger before announcing that he would restrict public gatherings in california because of covid but he thought disneyland might stay open the governor didn't want people to panic, and they feared they might, he feared, rather, they might, if Disneyland closed. Mr. Iger argued to Mr. Newsom that keeping the theme park open was a bad idea, given the health risks to guests and employees. Mr. Newsom later publicly praised Mr. Iger's advice and cooperation. Chapek didn't disagree with the decision to close the parks, but he was furious that Mr. Iger had excluded him <laughs> from that decision. Iger also overruled a furlough decision Chapek was about to make for theme park cast members until a COVID relief bill was approved by the government. Mr. Chapek's wife told him he would was little more than Bob Iger's lapdog. So, he has no hair. At, <laughs> I can't pet him. Uh, <laughs> so that's why he grew the beard for his wife, right? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> so I, I look at those things at the very beginning of his tenure as CEO. Wow! Like immediately, Iger was playing a game. It it seems like you know, like your your priorities are not my priorities. And I'm still in control. I'm still the executive chairman. You still technically report to me. Um, what a hard platform to start off up, knowing that that was what was lo you know, looming in the background. Um, and th the list goes on from there, obviously. Um, but this is something where I think we have given this guy, Bob Chapek, a very hard time. <laughs> yeah, we did. You know, we, we have... <laughs> And may, for many good reasons, right? We have yeah. run him through the mud for many, many good reasons. Yeah, he is not a public speaker. Yeah, he is not a warm character. Yeah, he is not a guy I think you want to spend a lot of time with because he doesn't really seem all that engaging. As I said earlier, like, the CEO of Disney needs to be a character himself, too. Yeah. Like, to be honest. I mean, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Need, needs to be a bit of a showman. Yeah. And, and, and he isn't. And, um, yeah, I, th knowing that Chapek from the start was treated this way um i don't know many 
many good executives in such high profile positions that could really steer their way out of that, knowing that Iger's probably got a yes man army behind him. Mm -hmm. That's tough. What do you do in that situation? Like, how do you yeah. overcome everybody against you from the from the start? Yeah. How do you how do you rectify this eventually? Like, you know, if you already know that, kill them with kindness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do uh, think like even this article, you know, even though I said it sways in Chapek's favor, I, there's a lot of moments too where he's clearly getting upset at people that like maybe he has the right to be upset about, but like he he shouldn't be going or like calling people uh, privately and being like, why did you say that about me? And things like that, which is what happened when, uh, you know, the this, the chief financial officer came out and was like, oh, well, there, our numbers aren't looking so good right now. And, and he had no idea she was going to say that, but it was like, how can I not say that? I mean, I kind of agree with her. Like, and it's just, it's just one of those things where it seems like there were a number of times throughout the story that he came out like firing guns and, I hate to say it, but like if you're going to be making millions and millions and millions of dollars and you're going to be the CEO of the this giant media corporation, then you have to be a little more chill, I feel like. And even though things are not working in your favor, and I get it, I, I would have been frustrated as all heck too. I mean, I'm not saying he shouldn't have been frustrated, but I just felt like at every turn that he had a chance to make things better, he was making things worse. So maintain the professionalism a little bit more. I would imagine that would be a hard thing to do uh, when you're being undermined by your executive chairman, who is publicly going behind your back and telling everybody else that he thinks he made a mistake and yeah. that you're, you know, you're not cut out for this job after all. In 2020, right, the, the first year Chapek was in control. The story details uh, nearly everything Mr. Chapek did or didn't do uh, reinforced Mr. Iger's sense that naming Mr. Chapek as his successor had been a huge mistake. Iger expressed his frustration with friends in Hollywood and word spread. And someone contacted the New York Times media columnist at that time, Ben Smith, to say Mr. Iger was reasserting control. Mr. Smith called and spoke to Mr. Iger. This is again, they're still working together. Iger hasn't left. Mr. Smith called and spoke to Mr. Iger, who followed up with an email. Quote, after a few weeks of letting Mr. Cha uh, Chapek take charge, Mr. Iger smoothly reasserted control. Mr. Smith wrote, Mr. Chapek read with mounting disbelief as this article came out at the time. Mr. Smith called Mr. Chapek the new nominal chief executive and even speculated that the choice of Mr. Iger's successor may be open again. This is in 2020. He's not even done with his first year. Mr. Smith quoted, Mr. Iger is saying in an email that a crisis of this magnitude and its impact on Disney would necessarily result in my actively helping Bob Chapek and the company contend with it, particularly since I ran the company for 15 years. It's then written that Mr. Chapek contacted Disney's communication uh, executive chief and explained to her that Iger was, quote, killing him. Uh, Mr. Chapek didn't sleep that night. Early the next morning, he confronted Iger on the phone. Iger denied that he had spoken to Mr. Smith at the Times, which only further enraged Chapek, who pointed out that Mr. Iger's quote came directly from an email he sent to the Times. <laughs> Mr. Iger said he didn't understand why Chapek was so upset. What was wrong with saying he was reasserting control in the midst of a crisis? You've cut my legs out from under me, Chapek said. I've never felt worse in my life. That is in the first six months of his tenure as CEO. I don't know how these two didn't go to blows eventually. <laughs> like this, this is nightmarish, you know, like by comparison. You think, yeah. of, you think of how like politics at your job pan out right day to day. Can you imagine being at this level, being one of the most visible executives in the world and having the other most visible executive treat you like that? Yeah. Act this way. It's Talk be behind miserable. your back to the yeah. biggest paper of record in the on the world stage. You know, like unbelievable. It's got to be miserable. I'm I, and I and I take nothing away from how miserable it must have felt <laughs> on JPEG's side. Like I clearly he was he was being just his legs being chopped out from under him. Like he says. I mean, there's no other way to put it. But you know, I just. I think that this this whole thing almost seems like it came from like small misunderstandings in the beginning of their like in in the beginning of his CEO uh, uh, title because it just seems like when this the article starts off with that whole plane ride like you said where you know he went in the back 
and just sat by himself reading the binder rather than listen about Paul McCartney and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, I think, again, like, going, I'm, I, I don't know. There's just something that sounds so weird to me about, like, we weren't there. We were only getting a very small snippet. But I just feel that there had to be a more professional way to handle it than to just, like, get up and walk away and go to the back of the plane. Like, I, I, and, and you know what? Maybe, maybe... Iger was trying to get him to even just calm down in that moment and just be like, ah, oh, we're we're hanging out, you know, let's let's get to know each other a little bit better, you know. Come and, help me pick out some uh you know, new colors for my yacht. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> you maybe he was thinking leopard print and Chapek could have been like, not the leopard print, no. my no, dude. Bro. Yeah. yeah. I so know. I think that there's two sides to it though, because I mean again, like I'm not gonna be in favor of JPEG. This was like a really bad situation that he was put in. But also, I mean it's eager to understand that JPEG, this is his first debut, right? And he's gonna be nervous. He wants to prepare. He wants to make sure everything's gonna go correctly. He wants to know uh, like how Iger would go about doing a public presentation and try to get notes based off of the people that they're around. Right. And then Iger to kind of just blindly just start chit chatting about his day and his yacht and all that stuff without recognizing how nervous Chapek could possibly be. And then instead of just getting everything over with and then sitting down with him and just saying, okay, let's just start off with this and then we'll finish up and then, hey, check out my yacht. You know, like that type of thing versus being like, oh, there's just like, you know, waste. I mean, I have to deal with it too when we're all going in our meetings in life and stuff. When you start off with a meeting and you have like a really thing, like important thing to do, you only have an hour to really talk about it. And then people just want to chit chat for about 20 minutes before we actually dive in. And then sometimes you try to assert yourself being like, okay, let's just start our meeting now. No, let's just really start. And then, you know, the higher ups are kind of just wanting to chit chat. I mean, what? How? How many more times can you be assertive and then not act like an asshole? You know? Yeah, and this in a way on one of the most important days of JPEG's life. And it's like scary, you know. To you know? Sure. Himself. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm not yeah. saying Iger handled himself properly. No. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. But well, Iger I, was checked out at that point. He was. But, he's retiring. I mean, it was right? just like yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. But yeah. I do think there was a way to be like, hey, Robert, Bobby, <laughs> I'm. I'm very nervous right now, and uh, I would really, I would really like to just go over this book for a little while, and then I would love to talk about your yacht. Like, I think it's hard I, for I someone think... to really say that they're nervous because that puts them on on a on like a what is the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, like, what's the word like I'm looking for? Or... No, not a pedestal. Like, they're they're showing their emotions, and it makes them feel weak. You know, so well, he's trying to like withhold that stuff. And but also try to get stuff done to kind of prepare so then he can if they want to chit chat, he can still go and prep. I would but argue that he was like, you know, sure. Baby about it. I would ar ar I would argue that storming off to the back of the plane is also showing like a, di a type of emotion too. you know. Sure. And that's kind of the through line that I kept getting through this story is like, yeah, he has a right to be pissed off, but. I feel like he keeps getting emotional over and over again. Maybe he could have handled it differently. Well, later, Chapek contacted the chair of the Disney board to share uh, how upset he was and how his reputation was being destroyed by Iger behind his back. Board chair Susan Arnold assured him that this too shall pass and that Iger would be gone in 20 months. Just let it go. Oh, Arnold. <laughs> in a call after the board of directors told both men to knock it off, Iger told Chapek he couldn't handle the truth and that the directors assured him if he didn't think it was working out, he could fire Chapek and return as CEO anytime he wanted. Yeah, then that part was mind boggling to me. I was like, okay, that's some that's some Doctor Evil type business right there. To just yeah. be like, this is when Iger became a villain to me, right here. Yeah. yeah, this point in the story made me go, "You are drunk with power, sir." Yeah, you are. And he doesn't want to give it up. Yeah, like, it's just you. Like at first, he's like, "Yeah, I want to get." Go retire, do my thing. Wait a minute, but then I have to give up my power, and then I have to give up like all my this stuff. Yeah. My, yeah. Wait a minute. My dining <laughs> reservations. I can't get into the fanciest restaurants. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Chapek called the board of director or the board chair and asked what Iger was talking about. Uh, after he heard him say, "I can fire you and return as CEO anytime," the board chair tried to make light of it, saying, "Well, you know, Bob, he may think so." But just let it go. Yeah. yeah. The board of directors just, yeah, tells just, you to just, you know, that's Iger. 
What? Bad management, man. It was terrible. Just bad all around. And terrible. then also it's just like, how can you step up to be a CEO when you don't even get the office? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's kind that's of true. It's just so sad. Like they're like, oh, you know what? He's gonna retire. We're just gonna let him have the office, right. and we'll just like have him like you know just sit there for a little bit and just take a look so he can come in and out whenever he wants and just like give his advice. Right. And then you'd be like, then shouldn't he take the small office over right. there in the corner with the shared bathroom with everybody else versus having your own bathroom and yep. actually I- feeling like a CEO? <laughs> I wonder if Chapek got a cubicle. Right, yeah, oh my right. god, he's in the bullpen. <laughs> Cubicle in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, buddy. Well, you had mentioned a little bit earlier, Tyler, um, you know, that restructuring of the Disney media arm that uh, went over like a lead balloon. Um, and they referenced that here saying, you know, due to cash flow issues during pandemic restrictions, JPEG moved to restructure Disney's media arm. Uh, Iger did not object to JPEG when he presented the idea in person. The same day, the head of Walt Disney Studios called JPEG to say that reorg would not be happening because Iger hates it. <laughs> Chapek immediately called Iger and asked if he said that to the chairman of the Disney Studios. Iger said, yes, I hate it. Why didn't you say that to me? Bob Chapek asked him. Iger didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> what what is the game? Like well, why? What, you... But but I also wonder what does that mean? Iger didn't answer. Like did he just like hang, hang up, up the phone, phone or like, like? Oh no! Like that's why I'm <laughs> saying. Inside. That's why some of these things in this article seem a little bit like just hearsay to me. Because yeah. what does that mean? He didn't answer. Like I just kind of don't believe he just like what did he go he like? Let's talk about my dust. yacht trimmings <laughs> again or something. You know like. I think a, a fair point to raise here, um, not only uh, did they say at the top of the story that this was backed up by numerous inside sources, but um, that this was passed by Iger and his people, and they didn't have any comment. They didn't come in and correct anything. They didn't come in and say, well, no, we didn't We didn't go that far. That I didn't say that, or that didn't happen. They let it go. Why is that? I wonder if they're just Safe trying face. to sweep it under the rug. Just I mean, like, it, and, and this is fading very quickly for how yeah. outrageous all this yeah. is. And Surely that's Iger probably about. because he, I mean, a couple calls here and there and get media involved and whatnot and slowly just kind of like. New York Times or not, this is not blowing aside. up the way that it probably exactly. would or should. I mean, if they, I, I think they've learned their lesson is like when they get out there and say things about, you know, this isn't like. Politi- this isn't like political, political, but it's kind of like Feels bus- it's business political. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. Oh, it's definitely and politics. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah right? exactly. So w- they've learned their lesson, and they're like, we can't. If we talk about this, it's just going to gra- gain traction. It'll get yeah. bigger, and I mean, they don't want this to get bigger. Obviously, e- either way, no matter who you blame, this looks bad on the whole company. Like because either yeah, nobody did their do nobody diligence. yeah nobody did a good job in this whole situation let's be honest because the fact that he was even able to be ceo when it seems like everybody wanted him to fail anyway like i don't know and we don't know what chapek was necessarily like behind closed doors like maybe he was weird to everybody yeah. there cuz he was weird to the whole uh the public fandom. perception is yeah. he's weird he's so, a weird guy i mean yeah. maybe he was exactly like that behind closed doors and everybody was like oh I don't want this guy to be my boss. Like, who knows? Charisma. You know? Yeah, that charisma w- was non existent. <laughs> well, let's not forget when Scarlett Johansson sued the Walt Disney Company, when Black Widow came out, obviously it was in the midst of the pandemic, and they put this mainly to streaming, right? Mm-hmm. So Black Widow went to Disney Plus. Um, a huge portion of her income that was supposed to be generated from the film was supposed to be tied to box office receipts. Well, we all re- know what happened during the pandemic, and that is. Nobody's going out to see movies. Um, And so she sued Disney. Well, if we all remember that time and what happened, this blew up in Chapek's face is he can't handle Hollywood. He he can't handle talent. In a statement approved by Bob Iger, Disney called the suit especially sad and distressing, accusing Miss Johansson of a callous disregard for the impact of COVID on theater goers and said she'd already been paid $20 million dollars. Talent relations fell under Iger's purview as creative head during that time. Chapek also contributed to the contents of the statement and signed off on it, but this was Iger's statement. And it completely blew up in Chapek's face as, this guy can't handle Hollywood, why is he the head of the studio? Why is he in charge? Why is he responsible for this company? Iger 
got no blowback whatsoever in any of this. And this was his. And we all know, I was talking to Tony before the show, remember the strikes? Mm -hmm. Remember what Iger was saying during the strikes? Right? That was, this is par for course. We have evidence that he, he thinks very differently about those little workers, those stars. Yeah. And so now we've got a trail. Now at least we have some evidence that he acts this way. You know, he, he seems to be this way. Iger's goodbye party comes um, as he is finally <laughs> oh, leaving man. the company, right? Iger and his wife decided to host their own party at their home in Brentwood. Mr. Iger chose a date when he knew JPEG would be in Orlando for an event. Do you remember covering this? Yeah. yeah. Right? Do you remember us talking about how outrageous it was that JPEG canceled in Orlando? He was supposed to be there, and he just decided not to be there? Yeah. JPEG canceled the trip and showed up to the party. The event of roughly 80 guests had Chapek at the farthest table from Iger's. Iger gave a long speech of thank yous to the people at the event, instrumental in his career from the beginning. When reaching current day, Iger said, I think I'll just stop there. Thank you all for coming. (laughs) There was no praise and no further mention of Bob Chapek. And in Iger's final executive session with the board, during an executive session without Chapek, Iger began by apologizing for not having had more interaction with board members since their meeting in Hawaii. Then he said, there are things that I feel I must leave you with that you must know because there are things that you need to watch. He then unleashed a broadside. Iger asserted that under Chapek, the collegial culture he would built over 15 years was crumbling. Disney was a company that depended first and foremost on creativity and Chapek's Uh, digital reorganization had damaged Disney's creative energies. The company, he said, had become distracted by a deep rift. Chapek and his allies on one side, Disney's creative executives, and the Hollywood talent community on the other. After learning this in conversations with allies at the company, Chapek started referring to Iger as an assassin. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's just so, so Shakespearean. Crazy. It's just like, oh, it makes me, this article, because like, I mean, this article is kind of like a summary of kind of what all those baby articles throughout the couple years have been, mm-hmm. right? And just kind of pushing them together. Yeah, it's tying everything together that we have reported like, on for yeah. years, right? Yeah. And But like having someone undermine you the whole time when you're supposed to take over is so high school yeah. and it's so mean girl status that it's just disgusting in a way where you're like, oh, yeah, don't worry, you'll do you'll be, you know, the the head top dog. And then there's always like, yeah, you can say that. And then they say it and they go, I on my side, I would like to do this, this and this and then pretty much undermine you the whole time. Yeah. And then everybody's just like. I can't believe you said that, JPEG. Look what Iger said. I mean, he's the one that actually has more like rapport with all these things and is more and and then JPEG being like, what the hell? And yeah. then Iger's the one that told me to do this, but he doesn't want to be that petty person to be like, but Iger approved. I asked him about this and then he said that's okay. But then Iger turns around and then tries to be like the good guy instead of Iger trying to correct JPEG, being like, No man, this is what you need to do. And then making Chapek be the hero. It's like Iger can't stop wanting to try to be the hero, right? It's just so gross. It just makes me really sad. It's, uh, yeah, not cool. It does feel like they're running for student body president. It is. It's just so sad. The bobs. And then, like, the whole, like, the wife. Oh, thank you. Like, or I, like, Iger's wife pretty much, like, being a cold shoulder as soon as uh, Chapek tries to go to the dinner. Yeah. It's just, like, you could already tell they wasn't welcome. And always having that, like, even what was the board member that tried to undermine Chapek trying to get him fired. You know, it's just like, no matter what you do, there's always someone with a dagger ready to stab you in the back. And that's, it's not even like a healthy, it's not a healthy environment. No matter where you go, you always have to turn and make sure no one's there. And it's like, how, how can you be a good CEO when you always have to look behind your shoulder and no, and you can't trust anybody. It's like, that's pretty much what it is. You can't trust these things. things. In, in a position like a CEO, I would I would expect these politics, I would expect these dirty tricks, but not from Bob Iger. I yeah. would never have expected that to come from the guy I'm replacing. It's so Jay Leno. He's retiring. 
Tony said the same thing. It is so Jay Leno. Leno. Yeah, (laughs) that's so true. I I haven't even thought about that, but yeah, does that mean that Bob Chapek is Conan O'Brien? Because I don't like that idea. I know. (laughs) Yeah, that's not a real comparison. (laughs) Let me finish it up here. Uh, Iger insisted uh, he'd put Disney behind him in retirement, vowed not to talk about Chapek unless others brought him up. Evidently, many did because Chapek fielded a steady drumbeat of unnerving calls from people who had met with Iger in retirement. They told Chapek that Iger had heaped criticism on him and wanted to talk about little else. Chapek complained about Iger's whisper campaign to the board chair, Susan Arnold, and other board members, some of whom had independently heard about Iger's trash talk. But now that Iger had officially retired, the board had no real leverage on him. We fast forward. We know that ultimately, um, after a string of missteps and especially PR, as we were talking about earlier, major PR disasters, um, ultimately the board pivoted, decided let's bring Iger back uh, in a Hail Mary uh, sort of situation. Uh, And now he's back with a contract extension having already happened again. Um, so will this guy ever not be CEO? Who knows? Um, How many more yachts is he going to afford? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we'll ever not see him not be a CEO. But um, at any rate, an incredible story that um, really changed my perspective on Bob Iger. Uh, as you know, I, I went from respecting the guy and and seeing him in a very different light than I do now. And it reminds me of the Harvey Dent quote, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Wow. wow. And that is Bob Dang, Iger. Harvey. Yeah. Bob Iger has become the villain. And that's terrifying to me because he should have. To- remember when I said when he came back, you remember me telling you guys, I think this is a mistake for him. I think this is dangerous for him to do. Hmm. I think his legacy will be tarnished if he comes back. Like he left in a heap of goodwill. Everybody loved him, right? Oh, you know, think of all of the wonderful memories, all the the warm and fuzzies. He's he's gone. But him coming back, I thought he's going to hurt his legacy somehow. It's there's just too much going on. And now we learn these things about him. And it's so disappointing to me because I want to be able to respect the head of the company that we all love and cherish yeah. and think is great. He's just as bad. Yeah. Like, you know, and uh, I, maybe maybe that's a lesson for all of us. Don't put people on a pedestal. I don't know. But. And I've also learned today that JPEG is Batman. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, just like Conan, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> just like Conan, I don't think that's a good comparison. You're right. Yeah. But.